All right. Shalom. Shalom, brother. Mike, it's good to hear from you. Good to see you, brother. So how's everything going? Hey, man. I mean, <laughs> I can't complain. You know how it, how it is. It's laid back here um, in Africa and Tanzania. Darcy okay. more so. And um, I ran into some nice brothers. Man, I, I did not even know that these brothers was, you know, this group of brothers was here. You know, and um, I was kind of... Um, Impressed by that, uh, okay. but other than that, bro, I mean, I mean, I'm doing pretty good. Cannot complain. Okay, so, 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 brother Just, Mike, know, besides, this, so, so, we on Mother Africa be calling us the channel. Mother Africa be calling, and brother, welcome you to this channel, brother. I want you to give the give my audience and um a a give an introduction of yourself. Let them know who you are and a little bit about yourself. All right, my name is Mike Akins. Um been a business owner since uh 20, 2014. See that the services as well as rooted in Hebrew. Uh I brought the rooted in Hebrew to uh Tanzania. Um see that the services pretty much anywhere I go with that. Um but I was uh working with um, Quest United Africa up until uh, um, I think it was the 9th of uh, October and so um, that broke apart and things of that nature so I've been here just you know doing my, doing my you know doing what I wanted to do it didn't slow me down. All it did just sped me up because I knew I was what I came here to do and what I wanted to do. It just hold, on, uh, hold that thought. Don't, that, hold that thought. Hold that thought. Don't mm -hmm. forget what you want to say. So, so mm -hmm. um, let the let the family know where you're from originally. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm originally from Arkansas, but I lived uh, half of my life in Chicago, Illinois. So I I went I moved to Chicago when I was like twenty. Yeah, 20 years old. And then I ended up going back once my son got out of high school, mm -hmm. um, back to Arkansas, and from there to Africa. Okay. All right. So uh, and also, um, so you 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 ran a business at one time up in Chicago. What was that? That was uh C Data Services. Um it was a communications company where um I installed cameras, alarms. Um, data centers. Uh, I would go there and install the systems. Uh, I did a had a lot of contracts with Walmart, a lot of the box stores. So when I started to see that um, a lot of box stores was going out of business, yeah, that that right there, you know, it's like a a slippery slope. It goes downhill. And so, um. You now let's talk about you uh, coming to Africa. When did you? When did you? You know, come to Af come to Africa. Around what time? My first you know, the exact date. All arrive? right, my first time was uh, April. No, either April or May of last year, when I first came um, to Tanzania, and it was with through it was through you know Quest Unite Africa. And at that time, it was myself, Oral, and Karis. We was we was the three uh, executive of uh, Quest Unite Africa. So 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 okay. So and that's what we're going to get into the Quest Unite Africa. And um, so you 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 want to uh, share some information with the listeners, with the family. Some some of my uh, some of my subscribers may already be familiar with Quest to Unite Africa. So they probably maybe want to update on it or find out what's going on. So anyway, brother Mike, um, let's uh, talk about let's go to talk about that in itself. What is Quest to Unite Africa? Well, Quest to Unite Africa. Um, um, well. It gave a belief that it was representing the two sticks coming together as one. And so under that umbrella, 
we was like working together with uh, um, the brothers and sisters, you know, um, descendants of the transatlantic slave trade, along with the brothers and sisters here in Africa. So we um, we got into the uh, started meeting some high uh, profile political figures here in Africa. And so we start, you know, start talking about, hey, how can we work together? You know, you know, in our in our um, well, at that time, mindset was to work together that we can start doing business together and come together at the same time as a nation. Yes, okay. and that was the pur whole purpose of it. Okay, so then. Would you say that that was his mission? What is the the the, the like a mission statement you have for Quest to United Africa? Yes, that was a mission. And then at the same time, when you start seeing brothers and sisters working together, mm -hmm. man, I mean, what? I mean, you 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 go you go pull in people, and Quest to United Africa did just that. It pulled in people, you know, volunteers. Uh, donors, because they seeing something that we're not used to seeing. And so um, that was the drive. And that was my drive. It was a beautiful thing to see brothers and sisters working together and, and uh, everybody offering his, his or her talent to further this mission. Yes, it was, man, bro, it was a beautiful thing to see and okay. to experience. Okay, so so now let, let's so so to be more specific, like so the question you know, Africa, you said to bring the two sticks together, speaking uh biblically talking about the 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 two sticks and um when we talk about basically uh the, the house of Israel Israel, meaning the tribes on uh, Ephraim and uh mm -hmm. the and the rest of the tribes of Ephraim uh and Judah that the, the most high say you bring together. But specifically exactly. when you went in when you went in when you all went into Africa, specifically you went into Tanzania. But the purpose was what was the when you when I say the mission, like what was the first uh action uh that was to be performed? Like um when you say working and going into Africa, I think it was something about you there was some bringing medical supplies, something what was what was explain to me what was, it was going on. Uh... It, it, it was first. It started off with heavy um, um, earth moving equipment, yeah. and so that's how I got started off first. Mm -hmm. um, but then once reality kicked in, we started to see that even though you may try to go and seek and they donate this stuff, it, it doesn't work. That it doesn't work like that. That they, they just up and give you this. Um, mm -hmm a used machine that still worth like $50,000 or something like that. So we had to scale down. And then once we scaled down to the medical side of it, the medical equipment, mm -hmm. yes. All right, it, then you start talking, we start talking with um, medical um, ministers of health. And so we started to, you know, talk with them. Hey, we, and then we got into with, uh, we got in, uh, conversations with companies that was getting this medical equipment mm -hmm. and then they would donate it to, you know, whatever country that needs it, you know, and that's how, you know, we got involved with the medical side of it. So it was bringing in heavy equipment to do roads and stuff like that, right? Yes. Yes, exactly. And that never, that never, that never went went anywhere. So then it moved to medical, met bringing the medical supplies into Africa. What, what, and was it anything else? You know what? And yeah, it was that and bringing in the medical thing. But then I brought I posed to the board. You know, everything that we do is is, is going to be based upon those scriptures. So I just looked at it and I said, Yahusha, he started off in the village. When he started preaching and teaching and healing, it was in the village. Where the sick, the garbage, the poor, that's where you started at. So my reasoning was, hey, you already started with the political um, side of it. We need to go to the people inside and work ourselves from in the village and work ourselves out. 
you know, coming out. And so they, they looked at that and they said it was a good idea. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we did. And that's where I'm at right now. And so what specifically would be going on that Quest United Africa would be doing in the village to, you know, uh, what kind of, what kind have, of uh, work? They had set up a, um, a vocational, it was called QTUA Vocational Training Center that I was supposed to have been uh, taking the lead on. And I said, okay, that'll work. I mean, I because I have a lot of trades. And I met I met a lot of brothers and sisters with trades here that has, you know, all, they have their little small schools and things. Mm-hmm. And so I was talking with them, hey, how you like to come up under QTUA Vocational Training Center? And that's the stuff I was putting together. I was putting, I was reaching out to brothers and sisters here in order for us to, you know, and and the brothers and sisters see, hey, he went and got other tradesmen. And into the school. And that's what I was working on uh, before all this stuff hit the fan. And then once it hit the fan, it was, yeah. the, you know, shoot. Okay. So let's, we're going to get to the hit the fan too. So pretty much you, you're you there on on the ground uh, getting this trade, this trade training school up and running and uh, teaching. Uh, Skills. What what type of skills you you were uh, uh, looking forward to teaching the the locals um, and villages? We was, we was going to start off with um, agriculture, farming, um, um, fruits and vegetables, high yeah. um, hydroponics, um, okay. furniture making, um, okay. clothing, everything, even down to the weed. Um, called it weed, but it was, it's it's called linen fibers. Okay. And, you know, we, you know that the Most High always spoke about how they was dressed in fine, clean, white linen, and that's yeah. a plant. Okay. And so, we was, you know, we was really looking into that and seeing how to grow it because, it like it like I said, um, um, in the past, that's, that's one plant that you can get three uses out of. You get the oil, they call it flaxseed oil, that's okay. where it's come from. It comes from that plant. And mm-hmm. then um, you can make material um, material out of it, then you make clothes out of it. Or sisters can take that fiber and braid it, you know, braid it in their hair, and at the same time, it's, it's healing their hair, their hair at the same time. Okay. okay. So Quest to Unite Africa is a nonprofit organization. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, it's nonprofit. Okay. And so... Based it, based on um, being a nonprofit, its uh, income is 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 based on uh, donations. Yes, it is. Yes. Oh, okay, so uh, pretty much every all income is based on donations, and so no, it should be. There's no returns. It's just based on donations, and salaries are set up according to whatever the uh, set in place. But the money will come from from the uh, donations for everything, right? Is that am I right? Yes. Now, when we started, I mean, donations started coming in, but, you know, um, from my standpoint, $50,000 is not a lot of money to me. And then when I was running my business and so, but uh, at this particular time, I opt out to a later date to, uh, for my, um, for me to be on payroll for QTUA because I, I still have my business and my business was doing quite well. And so right. I just said, you know, all right, go ahead and pay Karis. And at this time it was brother oral. Mm-hmm. And so they was the only two executives getting paid because I knew that there was, the money was not there in the, you know, in that organization at that time. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then pretty much they, so so yeah, let's get down to the meat of it, brother. So we won't go back too much time. So there was a financial issue at one time or something, was it? You know, yeah. To- um, it's, it would it would appear that some monies came up or oh, misplaced. Put it that way. Mm-hmm. Until um, and we didn't realize that until after we um. We voted to remove Brother Oral. And so with that, we had to um, 
we had the video and the audio. And so if anybody had any questions, all they had to do was go look at the video. And and at that particular time, Brother Oral, you know, stepped in, you know, uh, he hemmed himself up. And so the, the board deemed it necessary that he be removed from uh, QTUA. And, uh, and we moved forward after that. So now, I, so now let's get down to, so what's going on with you with respect to uh, Q2A, Q, what is it? Q2A, Quest United Africa. What's going on now with you and the organization? Well, they put out a, they, they, um, well, October 7th, um, and I told them prior to that, you know, my, you know, my visa was running out and then um, we needed, you know, I mean, needed funds to stay another three months, um, to which they was about to send $600 and everything, but I don't know when in the world had a conversation saying they just go, um, leave it the way it is, but um, that Sunday, they was they had a meeting outside of my presence as to um, shutting down the Tanzanian um, drive, you know? And so I was like, why you brothers keep on having these outside conversation when I'm not there to speak up? And they had this habit, and I always said it this. I said this to Karis and Oral and myself when we first got started. You don't have meetings outside of us three. I said, if you want to see an organization blow up, keep on doing that, and it's going to happen. And so they kept doing it down to this very day. They had the meeting, and by the time uh, I made it back to my apartment, because I was in route coming back. And then that's when I got in contact with him. I said, you know, I'm at I'm at my place and I was up under the internet and everything. So they called me in, we talked. I said, okay. Um I was like, well, I'm gonna need some funds for this because my visa right now. They said, Well, why would you wait? I said, No, I didn't wait. I've been telling you all this for like two weeks. For two weeks. And then they said, Well, Mike, QTA is not responsible to take care of you. I said, bro. I'm not asking you to take care of me. You have a $4,000 invoice bill that I was doing work for QTUA Logistics, QTUA, and rooted in Hebrew. But I billed them for the money I spent out for the office that was here in um, Jerusalem. They kept going back and forth whether they want to open it up, close it, open it up, close it. And I kept going back and forth looking for furniture. Looking for this and everything you do here in nearby, you need a middleman. He know where all the stores at. So they're not understanding how this stuff is costing money. So I sent them over um, an invoice, a detailed invoice of what money was spent here and what money went there. And then uh, they said um, they didn't have the money. And so I'm like, you have the, you using me as a guinea pig, truthfully, as QTUA Vocational Training Center. Because when they push that out to the brothers and sisters, bro, listen to me. Those brothers and sisters showed up. They were sending donations for that vocational training center. Yes, they were. Now, mind you, that donation supposed to got to ten thousand dollars. It's supposed to be split split up three ways. A portion of it goes to me to open up the school, uh, and a portion of it goes to QTUA, and a portion goes to uh, Nature's Legacy Garden, and they're the ones who like and. Um, you know, know how to heal the land, what it needs, and things of that nature. But I was upon the assumption, I'm like, bro, I mean, y'all do know a classroom costs money. You things you you got to get, but that's what their that's what their mindset 
was set up on of uh, dividing the money up three different ways. And so um, we had a heated discussion. Just, um, well, yeah, I don't know, heated. It was an argument. Take care. And um, what it was that uh, they go tell me, catch a bus to Kenya, 15 hours away, just to get out of Dar and come back in. And so by the time they re released $300, it was after eight o'clock. You cannot buy a bus ticket at that particular time. So I messaged them back. So the sister, it was Sister Patea. And she was going back and forth with me, talking about the boy made his mind up. We're not talking about this until a later date. I'm like, dude, on your best day, you would never manhandle me. Not on your best day. So Monday come around. I'm at the immigration's office with this other lawyer. Of course, the lawyer I, we was using, QTA, QTA, Q2UA was using. I'm sorry, go ahead, brother. Oh, what, I, I didn't say that, but since you said that, let me get so the audience will know basically what this is really about. So what the QT, Q2UA, I don't know, Quest of United Africa has basically separated themselves from you, right? Is This is what's going yes, on. Please. And they and they left you in Africa with without the resources they were supposed to continue to send to you to carry out the mission that was going mm -hmm. on in Tanzania, that region. So yeah. so then so then they they decided that they want to cut that region off or something for them gathering from you. Mm -hmm. And then they yeah. then, then they then they basically left you without support, without without the funds that you need to uh complete the, the 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 residency thing business residency thing that you were doing right exactly for quest, for quest to unite africa it's for quest to unite africa you're there doing business for the organization and you had already started the process and went through the process of getting residency to be able to continue in your work there for quest to unite africa and so they did not so they then cut completely cut you out from the organization and and refuse to send the money to uh, support you in any way financially with respect to finishing out getting the residency or any other uh, monies that would be needed to, to uh, sustain yourself on mm -hmm. that business venture that you were doing. This is, this, exactly. is what, this is what we're talking about, right? Okay, so exactly. you can finish, finish explaining to audience what you know your side of it where you were going and so um we had that argument that sunday monday i was just going back and forth uh at the immigration office with a new lawyer and he did find some discrepancy that was in the paperwork but while i was there he went and he he um straightened everything out and so i got in contact with the board when nobody's saying anything so I was like, Bobby, it's been a long day. Tuesday come back. Tuesday morning, I get, you know, thanks to y'all, I got up that morning, seen a message from Brother Walter. He said, you've been deleted from the chat. I'm like, okay. Grown man tell him I've been deleted from a chat? All right. So I get up. I call Karis. He ain't picked up the phone. I explain call who, Explain brother, who, who's Karis. Karis in the organization. Karis Copeland is the CEO of uh, Quest Unite Africa. He also is, uh, the, you know, I'll be on his channel on Covenant Awakenings, you know, and I, I talked, and I was talking to Karis like daily, daily. If he didn't call me, I called him. And so that's like the, um, the relationship we had. When that brother was down, I was there to lift him up. I knew my, I knew my role. And so going back to um, Tuesday, so I called another brother, Brother Mike Roebuck. And I said, Mike, what's going on? I mean, and he was like, and at this particular time, you know, it's, it's early morning for me, and it's like late evening for Mike Roebuck in California. 
So he was like, yeah, Mike, um, the board board the board the board voted you off of QTUA. I was like, for what? Um, he said he came in at the end of it and things of that nature, but he said, Mike, they talked about you like a dog. How they're going to ruin you. I was like, bro, are you for real? So Mike went on, he said, Mike, my days are numbered here. I can't, I can't stay with an organization. He said, I've been knowing you for four years. Me and you, this is like the, I mean, like the second time this what happened to uh the both of us, well, at least to me. And so um He's gathering information of what they're saying and things of that nature. And so, you know, I'm kind of heated now because now I'm here. I was here illegally, fundless. And yes, I was very nervous because I did not have a ticket to get back if I wanted to go back at the time. Back to the U.S. And so, yes. Right, you know, okay. I'm like, how in the world are these brothers go do this do this here? And so um I didn't try to call them. They text me talking about this and that. And I, I text them back and said, look, you can keep your demonic meetings. I know what you're all about. And so um it was mind-boggling to me because I trusted those brothers. I mean, when I say I trusted those brothers. So the shards over my checking account right down to this very day. Uh, Brother Walt, he has all of my tools. All of I, if, if I had my tool, tools that he has, no, brother, I have a business right now here in, in uh, Dar. All of my tools. And my tools are worth well over $10,000. Drills, every, you name it, I got it. And so... When I say my trust was with those brothers, it, it it was. Yeah, I'm serious. It was. And so when they was talking about, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, bro. No, go ahead. I'm listening. All right. And so when I say I trusted those brothers, yes, I did. I did. I trusted them down to the bone. If Carol's was feeling hmm, down, now I'm trying to lift this brother's spirit up for him to continue to do what needs to be done yeah. for this organization. Uh, and there was plenty of times I was on his channel and things of that nature. So, but I was looking at in a matter of one, not even a full week, in a matter of five days, that Thursday, they had the audacity to send me a, a, a PDF stating that they accept my resignation. And I'm like, where are you getting this from? Because we had that conversation on Sunday and I told him, I said, bruh, I said, do you all hear you all self speak? So just sit back and think for a moment. And then I said, you know what? Maybe I need to pull back a little bit and rethink my association with you brothers and sisters. Because this is not making no sense. Now, prior to me saying that to them, about a month ago, I even told them, and I told them, I, I said, I need to have a meeting with the whole board. Everybody showed up. I said, this board needs to be dismantled. That was my take on it. I said, if you're going to live by Hebraic life, I said, the Most High did not have all of these Indians sitting around making decisions, and nobody can come up with um, a sound decision. Nothing was never done. Something was always started, but never right. was completed. What? And so I'm like, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm listening to you, brother. Go ahead. I'm listening. Mm -hmm. And can so... You, see, you can see me, right? Yeah, I can okay, see you. Yeah, yeah, the time, it's a time on this thing that I, I, I got to be mindful of, but go ahead, brother. We're going... Get to get to right. the meat of it as soon as you can, and we'll. And if we have to do a part two, we will. Okay, and so um, they did what they say what they was going to do. They removed me from the board, and which to which I didn't even know it until I spoke with Brother Mike, and um, 
And Thursday, that's when they sent um, the letter out saying that I, I mean, I resigned. And so I called some brothers and sisters and I told them, I said, no, that, that I didn't do that. I didn't resign. And they very well know this. And then they just got on on, on one of their lives and said, we broke, we, you know, we broke ways in a, uh, like we were still friends. And that's not the case. I haven't heard anything from Karis. Not one phone call, not even one phone call to say, hey, Mike, I know when things got heated Sunday, let's talk about it. I ain't getting nothing from Karis, right, right, right down to this very day. And so when I look back at it, I'm not like, bruh, the paperwork is complete. All they need is to go ahead is the money, the funds that you've been asking these brothers and sisters for to get my immigration. Boom. Let's go ahead and do it. <sighs> Ain't nobody picked up the phone, not one red cent, and said anything about that. Yeah. Not one red cent. But, so, um, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, but then, gonna... yeah, go ahead. Thanks. Go ahead. You know, but. At the same time, you know, like I, I was kind of worried. I'm, 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 like I said, I was here illegally and things of that nature until I ran into the family here. They helped me out a great deal. They did. And so now is that with that with that family, you know, now we're talking as to, hey, how can we grow now? Because, you know, I told them what happened and everything. And so um, they was very saddened. To hear that it went down like that, it was very sad. So, so then anyway, so I, and and I want to let the family know that I had uh, participated, not being a part of Quest to Unite Africa, but I was in on the Zoom meetings when it when it first oh, started. Yeah. I, actually, I actually, I actually, I actually had you know gave, given donations myself. So you know, so yeah, so I I I, I am familiar with it. I didn't know much about it, but you know, I thought you know that I would help. We 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 are woke people, Hebrew people, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we want to you know basically we want to unite. We want to do the things of our God, and so you know, um, you know, so I I I would say, well, you know, okay, well, you know, if I can help, I I will help, you know, some kind of way. So I you know I participate in the donation, but anyway, so but I I didn't go any further with it after a while because I myself. Didn't I? Did, it's some things about it I just didn't, didn't, didn't. I didn't feel good about. But anyway, I won't get into mm -hmm. that. But anyway, brother. So what's happening? There was a lot of fallouts. The guy Oral that was involved, he seemed to be, you know, a person that was not, you know, on the up and up and the, on the righteous mm -hmm. tip that Abaya calls for. And now what happened to you seemed to be a serious issue, you know, because we're supposed to be, you know, loving one another as the scripture says. And so, you know, the bottom line is here you are over here in Africa, you know, for that mission. And then I, and then they just wipe you out and just don't even say, well, dad, we at least got to give the man some some funds to even get back to the U.S. if he needs, you know, um, none of that. You know what I mean? So that's a concerning situation. And so is there anything you want to do before we close it out? And if you want to do a part two, let me know. Yeah, it's gonna, I mean, it's going to be a part two because um, I, I will say it, it's they kept warning me, truthfully, uh, Karis and Sister Shar, hey, you can't go on a uh, QTUA YouTube channel talking about the Almighty and quoting scriptures. And I'm like, what? Yeah, it's a 5013C. I said, well, then you got to see to it that you need probably to take that off there because everything that you we we do and you're saying you're using these two sticks to come together, using QTUA, and you're saying, this is the thing that gets me. When you call and you say, this is the most highest organization, and you're trying to mingle it with man's rules and regulations, what you can and cannot say on a faith-based conversation, that's a problem. And so... This is the reason why they went in to Africa Logistical Agency on their channel and deleted all of the videos that I had, that I had done. They, they, they went in and deleted those. So now, how is it that we want to say we're, we're the people, we, we, this, we have one Elohim, one creator, and then you were talking about some stipulation that you, that, that you cannot say on this particular channel. 
I don't need that 5013C if that's the case. And so now it seems like that's their, their heart. And then when they're talking about neo-diplomacy, the Most High don't deal with diplomacy. He give out rules and regulations. If there's a, a diplomatic scripture out there, please enlighten me. And so I'm looking at two different organizations, First United Africa, Region 6, what they calling themselves, and they use these brothers and sisters as it, it would appear to get donations based upon the Hebraic uh, people waking up. But there's some stipulation that you or anyone else cannot say on QTUA uh, YouTube channel because of a 5013C. And so that was a, a that was their, um, if, that, if you want to call it, they want to use that reasoning, they used it and they showed themselves. And I've been with this organization from day one. I put in, last year, I put in a lot of time and money into this organization because I believed in it. If you would have told me that these brothers and sisters would have did this, I would have called you a lie, Eric. I would have called you a bold-faced lie that these brothers would do something like this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, so, I'm you know, like, uh, yeah, I know how, how you all uh, were pretty tight, you know, and uh, so... You know, it is kind of like uh, it's disappointing, it's surprising, you know. But um, but anyway, the, the goal, the goal now is to basically, you know, tell your side of the story so people can see, you know, that you know what happened from your from your side, you know, because you pretty much have been kicked off their platform. So everything that could be said would only go for what they go their way, like with their, their side of it. So this is what exactly. we're doing today. And that's the way they get, that's, yeah. that's, that's what they was banking on. And I mean, if you, if you, I don't, I don't follow them. No, I, I, I unsubscribe when they did what they did. And, um, and you look at, they've been putting out videos. Is this reason why we got, this is the reason why they got rid of, uh, uh, Africa logistical agency. Man, I never seen Karis around there looking for some dirt on me. Never thought in a million years had a brother call me. Um, and he called me, you know, I met him through Africa Logistical Agency. And I knew some brothers in uh, Angola. And they working with the oil business. So me and this other brother and his partner, we have a meetings near about every week on trying to get their business set up in Angola. Karis called this brother looking for dirt. The brother called me back. He said, Mike, I know what happened between you and Karis. He said, it seemed like the brother is fishing. He's like, I said, they are. They, 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 they literally sit up and said they go try their best to destroy me. What Hebrew, what Hebrew thinks that way along with this awakening? What Hebrew does not sit down and say, you know what, um, we made, made a mistake. Bruh, if they said we can, I come back. Oh no, ain't no going back from me. Uh, uh, it's just not no. There's no going back. It's just that gonna, simple. Go ahead, brother. What we're gonna do? We're gonna do a part two. Um, so again, this is Mother Africa. Be calling. Hit the like button. I'm best to love you, Israel, also known as Eric. This is brother Mike. And so Mike, Mike was hooked in with uh, uh, Quest to Unite Africa, and also. He was a a a, a uh, basically a ongoing guest on Karis Channel. What is it again? Uh, Covenant Awakening. Yeah. And uh, he was a part of that family and everything. But you know, it, things have gone awry. You know, there's some there's some rottenness in here somewhere. And so we're gonna come back. We're gonna do a part two.